Hello, everybody. Once again, I'm so happy that you chose to join us for our Bible study. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come to say thank you. Thank you for once again bringing us together, even virtually. Thank you, Father, for hearts and minds that desire to study your word. Father, we ask as always that you would open our hearts and minds to receive you afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are, of course, still on article number 12, the harmony of the law and the gospel. And our author writes, we believe that the law of God is the eternal and unchangeable rule of his moral government, that it is holy, just, and good, and that the inability which the scripture ascribes to fallen men to fulfill its precepts arises entirely from their love of sin to deliver them from which and to restore them through a mediator to unfeigned obedience to the holy law is one great end of the gospel and of the means of grace connected with the establishment of the visible church. And so today we will pick up where we left off last week with verse 24 of the seventh chapter of Romans. And, uh, I will continue to use the NIV version unless stated otherwise. So Romans 7.24 says, What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? A wretched man or woman is a miserable person in a miserable condition. If you read the whole chapter, uh, the whole seven chapter, you can feel Paul's de desperation. You, you feel him when he cries out, Oh, wretched man that I am. Paul lays out his and our life scenario uh, before and after the law. Or another way to look at it is before and after conversion. In verse 9 of the seventh chapter, Paul says, Once I was alive, apart from law. But when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. The once uh, <clears throat> that he's referring to is before conversion, uh, before his Damascus Road experience. He, he says, I was alive, meaning he was not bothered by the law. Uh, he thought he was keeping it. He, he had not been convicted. He had no idea that he was on the path that led to hell. Everything seemed fine. He had no idea that, the, that death was lurking. We all know that just because everything seems to be fine don't make it, don't mean that it is. We, we had, we once had a, a leak in our hot water heater. It was a slow leak. I have no idea how long it had been happening. Uh, until one day, we looked up to see a wet spot in the ceiling. So, just because we are not aware of a thing happening <clears throat> does not mean that it's not. The problem is, the problem is there even if we don't realize it. Paul says, when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. <clears throat> Excuse me. The commandment revived the sin that had been laying dormant. Then I all of a sudden realized that I'm a lawbreaker. And that I was deserving of death. Paul says, I realized all of a sudden that I was a lawbreaker. That I was deserving of death. What a predicament to find yourself in. To be faced with the fact that you are one of the folk you talk about. Every believer needs to come to the place where he recognizes his own wretchedness. We need to see our own desperate need. 
the wretched person is is a is a captive and a slave of sin wanting to do right but having no power to do it the wretched person is in a constant inter battle always trying and failing the law is an extra excellent mirror it can show me my dirt but it cannot make me clean even though the law is holy it cannot make me holy the law is just but it cannot justify me it can only condemn me the law is good but it can never make me good obeying it won't make me good it can only show me my wretchedness and show the evil that dwells in me once again i should point out that the law is spiritual there's no problem with the law verse 14 says we know that the law is spiritual but i am unspiritual sold as a slave to sin i'm a slave to sin the law shows me that the real problem is me. Now we know that as, as a true believer, as a saved person, my position in Christ is that I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. And positionally, as a believer, I'm no longer a slave or a sin. I'm positioned in Jesus Christ. But Paul is not referring to his position in Christ. He's referring to his actual condition. He, he's referring to his actual experience of living out the Christian life. God does not save us and, and then immediately take us up to heaven. We are saved and left here to work out our salvation, to live out the gospel in everyday life with everyday people. Romans 7, 15 through 24 is Paul's very real life experience that he's going through at the time of this letter. And if we're honest, that's our experience as well at the time of this lesson. We are a slave to sin. A slave is, is, is a person under the domination of another person. And because of that, he cannot do what he wants to do. And he must do what he does not want to do, even if that is what he hates. What I want to do, I don't do it. What I hate to do is the very thing that I do. A slave, uh, or Paul says, I can't do what I want to do. And I must do what I hate to do. It is here where Paul distinguishes between himself and the indwelling sin in him. He says that it is not I that do it, but sin that live it, that's living in me. Now, Paul is not trying to get out of personal responsibility for his action. He, he's not saying sin made me do it, so it's not my fault. He is letting us know that in a believer, there are two natures, the new man in Christ and the old sinful self. When we're saved, the sinful self stays there. Even though the old man is not his real self, he does still have to reckon with him. So, so Paul is describing the war that's within every believer. This is not a struggle for non-believers because they only have one nature, which was inherited from Adam. Their bent is toward evil unless they are somehow constrained. Evil is what they do. Now, I'm not saying that every non-believer is evil. Uh, no, because there are some non-believers do more good things than believers. So no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying at, there's a bent toward evil. Those who are not saved uh, has a bent toward sin and love it. 
or, or at least not bothered by it. But believers sin and hate it and, and are powerless to break the power of the indwelling sin. I, I'm in need of a deliverer, someone who can rescue me from slavery by his power. Paul asks the question, who shall deliver me? Notice that he does not say what shall deliver me or how shall I deliver myself. That is the question we ask. You know, when we think that there is, uh, when we think we have options, we, we will say, what can I do or how can I get myself out of this mess? You know how we do, you know, when, when we're not quite at, at rock bottom, when we think, uh, okay, let me just try one more thing. That's our self-talk. When sin has us deceived into thinking that I can try one last thing to fix myself. Sin has me deceived into thinking one last thing, just give it one last try and it'll work. And one last try will make a difference. So I come up with rules. I come up with, with laws. I put myself under the law. We, we come up with, with things that, that I will hold myself accountable for, that I will or not do anymore. I, I write them down and, and I put them in my phone as reminders. Then I muster up all of my willpower and energy and go to work doing it. And for a while, I succeed. But then when I least expect it, I go back to my old ways. I fall again. The deception of sin is to make me think that I can overcome my nature, my old nature, with the law, with rules, with do's and don'ts. That's putting myself under the law and thereby making the old nature stronger. 1 Corinthians 15 and 56 says, the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. We think that if I try harder, if I give myself some rules, uh, if I keep some do's and don'ts, then I'll be victorious. What we don't realize is that the law is, is, is a magnet that draws out of us all kinds of sin and corruption. You know how we are. If you say don't, that's the very thing we want to do. And, and so the law when we, when we are trying to obey the law, it, it's a magnet. It, it draws out of us all kinds of sin and corruption, even things that you had not even thought of. It, it's kind of like a person wanting to stop eating sugar, uh, you know, because sugar is bad for us. So they decide, you know, they're like, well, I'm not going to go cold turkey, so I'll just gradually cut back, you know, have a little bit less every day, thinking that it will gradually get the sugar out of our system. What they don't realize is that sugar, even a little bit, will make you crave more sugar. It won't make you crave less. It'll make you crave less, more. And, and so the plan is, it, it, so what you have is a plan for failure. And so is the case when I decide to put myself under the law to straighten myself out. If we think we have something in ourselves that we can use to work out my problems, if we think that, that our wills are strong enough, our desires are, are motivated enough, that we can control evil in our lives, that we can control sin, that we can control me uh, by simply determining to do so, then we have to come, we have not come to the end of ourselves, not yet. If, if I still have a plan, 
if I still think I can, I can figure it out, I can still fix me, then I have not come to the end of myself, not yet. And the, the, the spirit of God simply folds his arms and, and waits for us to run out of steam. It, it, it's like, well, you know, I'm here. I, I'll just let you run out of steam. And, and I eventually become tired and discouraged. And eventually I give up. And once again, become aware of my wretched condition. The Greek meaning for wretched is a person who, ha who is exhausted after battle. Uh, trying to fix me is exhausting and is a losing battle. What could be more wretched than exerting all your energy to try and live a good life only to discover that your best is still not good enough. Thus the cry, who shall deliver me? That is a cry for a deliverer. It's when you know you are utterly powerless and helpless and without hope. When the cry is who, that is a cry for deliverance outside of myself. That is saying, I cannot. I, I've tried all my tricks. I'm on empty. And then out of that place, out of that failure, we cry, oh, wretched man that I am. Sin has deceived me. And the law, as my friend, has come in and exposed sin for what it is. When I see how wretched I am, then and only then am I ready for the answer. But not until next week, when you join us for another Bible study. Until then, bye-bye. See you again next week.